Well, it's time to throw that PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X in the trash because yes, the PlayStation 5 Pro is coming and it's looking hot, hard, and buff. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. That's right, we got a ton of new information on the PlayStation 5 Pro. I am so excited. It feels like just four years ago that the PlayStation 5 launched because it did in November of 2020, and now it's time for a new PlayStation console because yes, in the rampant onslaught of consumerism, we can't stop for a moment to question whether or not we should purchase this new thing. No, I say we go out and buy it now. Pre-orders in the description. Just kidding, you can't buy it right now, but there is gonna be a huge, actually substantial uplift on this PlayStation 5 Pro if the leaks and rumors are to be believed. And yes, I am gonna be buying it if this is true. So now this information comes from Tom Henderson from insidergaming.com. And here's the spicy bit of news he dropped on us today. So taking a look here, we do have some basic information about the PlayStation 5 Pro. It looks like he's stating that previously it was revealed that it's gonna be 45% faster than the PlayStation 5, two to three times ray tracing performance or up to four times in some cases which is absolutely wild can't wait to stare at my crying reflection in the floor as i realize i just lost another six hundred dollars but also in terms of the fan favorite teraflops we're talking about 33.5 that is a lot of flops fellas which means that yes that is a significant increase over the PlayStation 5's original, roughly over 20 teraflops. And if we know anything about flops, the more the better. Now, in terms of something that's really impressive here actually is apparently they're moving from FSR upscaling like we do on PC. No, PlayStation has said that looks like garbage. We're gonna be using our own solution called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling rolls right off the tongue. And this is going to allow them to have much better upscaling support, kind of similar to what we have with DLSS on PC. So really cool stuff there. And also apparently it's gonna have custom machine learning, support for resolutions up to 8K is planned and AI accelerator supporting 300 tops of 8-bit computation. Oh, the 30 WGP is running specialized BVH8 traversal shaders. There's so many BVHs and WGPs. What does this all mean? I mean, let's, let's talk about something that actually makes sense. So I put together a chart on the PlayStation 5 Pro to help you determine whether or not you should throw out 600 clams because yes, that is what I'm expecting the price to be on this thing. And let's be honest, you're gonna. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So in terms of the actual specs here, I've listed out the Series S, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, and then of course the PlayStation 5 Pro, which is all but confirmed to be coming out. I mean, come on, they gotta give it to us. Please, I'm begging, give it to me, baby. So in any case, yes, the PlayStation 5 Pro is apparently gonna be moving from 36 compute units on the PlayStation 5 to 60 on the new PS5. That is a substantial increase. Now, according to the leaks, it sounds like the GPU boost clock is likely to be the same, but it also seemed like to me that they weren't entirely sure. So I'm gonna say it actually could increase potentially up to 2.5 gigahertz, but only time will tell. Now it is gonna be using the same Zen 2 CPU, so you're not gonna be doing any 240 hertz gaming as you are gonna be CPU limited. So I do suspect the majority of games will continue to be 60 hertz with some 120 20 hertz options thrown in there because it's gonna be far too difficult for them to push higher than that on the aging CPU architecture. Now, in terms of the clock speed, it actually is apparently gonna be moving up, according to Tom Henderson, if it's put into the CPU boost mode from 3.5 to 3.85 on the PlayStation 5 Pro. So that's probably just a small increase to help support the vastly superior GPU. Now, in terms of the memory, it sounds like probably 16 gigabytes once again, much like the PlayStation 5, although this time running at 18 giga transfers rather than 14, a pretty substantial increase. And do keep in mind, it's 
possible you could be seeing more than 16 gigabytes, maybe 32, but that's probably not gonna happen. And according to the 576 gigabytes per second of total bandwidth that was leaked, well, we're probably looking at the same 256 bit bus as well. Now, he also did mention that Quote, it's understood that as a means to make the PlayStation 5 Pro as competitive as possible, it will have a detachable disk drive, which will be identical to the latest iteration of the standard PlayStation 5 and one terabyte of storage. So if you wanted two or four terabytes in this thing, yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. They wanna keep those costs down. And all that information in terms of specs is very interesting. And for those of you who are crazy like me, who absolutely love talking about specs and just can't get enough i'm sure you loved it but what does this actually mean in terms of performance what's the price going to look like and when can i buy it i mean take my money well i'm glad you asked because we're talking about probably if we take a look at the chart here 600 for the ps5 pro roughly and in terms of performance well based on these teraflop numbers and there's a lot of flopping going around here guys we're probably looking at anywhere between 162 to 186 percent of the performance of the PlayStation 5. So I'm not entirely sure where they got 45% because some simple math would put you at a bare minimum of that roughly 60% increase in terms of performance. And that's just on the actual general gaming performance in ray tracing, as he did mention, we're talking potentially up to four times those rays, baby, and I can't get enough rays. Now, in terms of a release date, we're almost certainly talking about November 2024, as it was leaked that fall of this year would be the release date potentially of the PlayStation 5 Pro. So we got to ask the question, should you wait for the PlayStation 5 Pro and pull the trigger, or should you just buy a PlayStation 5 now? Or maybe you just don't care about buying a console whatsoever and you just want to hear about the brand new shiny thing well great for you but for those of you out there who actually want to potentially purchase this would I recommend you do it based on these specs? Actually, yes. This does look like a very good console overall. I mean, memes aside about, you know, constantly upgrading our consoles and PCs ad nauseum, it, it does actually look like a substantial performance increase and at just a $100 increase in price, considering that inflation has significantly impacted the PC space, the value you're going to get out of this console is actually pretty good. And for me personally, I know that I don't use my PlayStation 5 as often. It's the only console I have simply because outside of using it for playing 4K Blu-ray discs, I just find it's not necessarily powerful enough to take full advantage of my 4K TV. So with a console like this, using better upscaling and having far more performance, I do think it will be a better matchup for 4K TVs in the year of 2024. So if you can't get enough of those flops and you wanna see 4K, 8K, 10 billion K, okay, maybe not that. Well, the PlayStation 5 Pro should have you covered, but it does beg the question, is this necessary? I mean, do we really need a PlayStation 5 Pro? Controversial opinion, but when the PlayStation 5 first came out, I argued that a Pro wouldn't be necessary simply because the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X were actually pretty good. But as the years have gone by, I'm starting to change my tune and I would like a Pro model. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that a PlayStation 5 Pro is even necessary or do you think that the PlayStation 5 is enough? And also, would you actually buy a PlayStation 5 Pro? Because it's not gonna be a doubling of performance in the majority of games, so I'm interested to see how many of you out there would still wanna upgrade. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.